What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Melo Morris. Thank you so much for joining me today. When you see this robe, you know it's about to go down. And today we got a special treat for you. We have a debate. And uh, got my lady, Miracle Jones, or I say your last name, Jones, right, right. MJ, whatever you want to call it. She go by many names there. Got a beautiful Afro puff there. I love it. I'm, I'm a big-time natural hair fan. Big-time. Love it. Right. <laughs> How you doing today? I'm doing all right, and you? Doing wonderful, doing wonderful. Uh, what sparked this debate today, guys, I had a photo on my uh, Facebook and uh, Instagram as well. Uh, and uh, it's I'm not sure if you're a, a sports fan or a miracle, but it's a it's a guy by the name of Ja Morant. He's about to be probably the second round, I mean, second overall pick in the NBA coming up here. And uh, so he posted a couple, what did you say? It's from Murray State. You got so you I'm on this sports. Oh, we might have to talk about sports in a minute. Yeah, come on. <laughs> so he uh posted a couple photos of him and his lady. Now every other picture he got on his Instagram is no. I mean the comment section is available, but just so happened these two photos, no comment section available. So I said, and based on a lot of experiences I've seen, we can get into that later on of African American successful young men with. Non-black girls, it seems like they always got to either turn the comment section off or they can't really post it. So I said it's kind of sad that that's the case. I didn't say why I believe, but I just said it's sad. I just kind of wanted to leave it open to see what everybody else had to say. And uh, so, yeah, I just wanted to open up the floor to you first to give your take on why you believe that's the case or pretty much what was your response to me at that time. Um, well, what was going on in my thinking was uh, the reason that they have to do that is because uh, from the very beginning they pick the women that they feel most men now this is not all men of course, of course. Most speaking men, generalities uh, yeah most men pick the women that they feel that they can control or in some way manage more than um, other women now that may not be a black woman or a white woman it's just so much as um, a woman that can't be controlled is not often picked more than a woman that can be controlled. And right. that's where my point of view started. That's where I came uh, with an alpha female. So an alpha female, and I got this from, uh, I had to do a little research, Mel. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, an alpha female, just for, you know, the ones watching who don't really know what an alpha female is, is... um. Uh, a woman who has embraced her leadership ambitions. Uh, she is talented, highly motivated, and self-confident. And I got that information from the scienceofpeople.com. Gotcha. And um, now, uh, alpha male is basically the same thing, but it's a male, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, so I feel that a lot of times our people, black people, mm -hmm. normally pick um our males normally pick women that they can control because I've heard this a lot. And this is like, this is not, this is not a knowledge of the unknown. This is, it's many men who come and they say, uh, I don't, the reason I don't pick black girls is because they won't do what you want them to do. Mm -hmm. and, and so um, that's why I kind of felt like, um, I, no, I'm not saying that. Uh, what, what's it? What is his name? John Moran. Yeah, I'm not saying that that's the case with this young man because I don't know his thinking. But um, I just feel like a lot of a lot of our men are picking women that they can control as opposed to uh, to women that they can deal with. That's what I feel you, from. and I feel you, and I'm not even going to act like that's not even the case because I had my uh, swirl moment in my life where I was considering dating a you know a caucasian woman and the reason i was i had two friends in college that was like they was either one of them was engaged to one and the other was already married and they was telling me some some of the same lines of what you're saying like bro she got good credit she'll let you do what you want to do and they i was like and they kind of threw me off you know i'm like i don't want that easy streak you know i want to be able to have somebody's gonna make me better not just i can you know do what i want to do right. however I want to push back on you just a little bit. Okay. Do, for these men that are very successful, because we got men like Michael B. Jordan. I don't know if you remember last year when the Black Panther came out. I do. He had put a picture out with him, and it wasn't, he didn't even announce it as his girlfriend, like John Morant. 
he just had a picture of him and a white lady. I think maybe even been Hispanic. And his comment section got attacked so bad by majority black women. And to the point he had to take the photos down because they were threatening to boycott the Black Panther movie. A movie that everybody supposedly was so proud of to, to have come out. I'm sure uh, the Marvel people, uh, Disney, contacted him saying, man, take this photo down. Because okay. <laughs> it's about to be some money that we about, you know, we, you know, black people love Marvel, but black people really about to support this, you know, Black Panther. So he had to take that down, and guess what he followed that up with? Yeah. Two pictures of him and his mama. Oh. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so he had to get them back on track, you know, okay, it's my black mama, you know. Right. So, I, but I say that to say, with those men being so successful, is it that they want to control, or is it, because you know the stigma of a lot of Black women. I'm not saying all, because I got a great black woman myself, and she don't push back on me as much as the stigma is, you know. But the stigma is you're going to get a lot of mouth. You know what I'm saying? You're going to get a lot of pushback, and, you know, she's going to want to run stuff instead of being a partner with you. Is it that men are afraid, or is it that men are afraid of that, or do they really just want to dominate and control? You know, because the alpha phrase... That does intimidate me. I would say if a woman identifies herself as an alpha woman, I would I probably wouldn't go past that point with her. You know what I'm saying? Because there can only be one alpha in the situation. That's why I believe <laughs> not just black women, but you can't have no two women in one house. So, you know, because when two women in the house, they gonna book heads. No matter if it's mother, daughter, mother lost, you know, mom, they, it's gonna go. They gonna go at it. So. If you got two people identifying as an alpha or try to establish their dominance, it's it's a, eventually it's gonna fail, you know. Okay. Um, uh, I have to say I disagree on that. I believe yeah, two, uh, two alpha people can live in coexistence as long as they both have their understanding. They have that they, but they have to have their understanding in order for the uh, term alpha to be able to. Uh, should I say, be in the midst of their relationship, but not take over their relationship. The male, the male um, he understands his point and he also understands that, hey, my woman might have something different, but that's okay. We, yeah. we in this together, we're going to figure out a way to compromise. A lot yeah. of the times, um, I believe our relationships have lost that compromise. Mm -hmm. Because of the way that we all believe, well, not all of us, but most of us believe, and that has a lot to do with other components of our beliefs. Mm -hmm. a, a lot of people don't really, in, instead of believing in coexistence, they believe that, you know, I should be dominant, and that's not, that's not the case. Because when you get in a relationship, it's a partnership. That's right. That, not an over-dominant ship. That's right. So. <laughs> I'm sorry about this. Somebody decided to cut the yard right right about now, and I'm normally at home I, around this time of day. So <laughs> I get it. I understand. <laughs> but that's 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 beautiful what you just said, and it's 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 crazy, and that's kind of why majority of our relationships don't make it nowadays. That the entire relationship we're trying to establish who's who's dominant over who, instead of realizing we partnership we into this thing together. You know, that's that's big, and um so. And I kind of wanted to hit you with a couple of questions, if you don't mind, just I thought about the last couple of days okay. with that, because I don't think a lot of women probably ver verbalize it the way you have, which is awesome, the way you're able to uh, make it make sense, the way a lot of uh, a lot of our women think. But how is that working? You know, because if you look at, you know, black women overall, not saying all, but overall. We, you know, it's forty eight percent that has never been married. You know, statistically speaking, and um, so how's that working? Is that you know that dominant or that the the way the perception? It may not be reality, but the perception that America in general has on black women. The you know how's that working as far as getting a partner? Because it's not that black women don't want partners. Because you know we go on any dating website. It's full of black women that, that, that's desiring men and desiring people. And they, uh, sad to say, I hate to say this, because I got three black sisters, a wife, a mom. 
our women are the last picked right now. You know what I'm saying? And so how is that working? That that overall perception? Well, Mel, I believe that the reason that is is because a lot of society has built and shaped our minds to believe that, you know, we're the last pick. And not only have they shaped our mind to believe that they've all the time tried to take black women off the pedestal that 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 they put white women on. Like now you're seeing more more black women date non black men or more black women um dating each other, which is I feel outrageous, but you know, I won't go into that. That's a different story. <laughs> um but I I just believe that Finding who you are, quote unquote, supposed to be with, it's always going to be um, trial and error. Yeah. You, you're going to have men that, you know, I, oh, no, I can't stay with them because of the way I am. And right. I feel that it's a lot of black women that choose not to settle, which is why we're the last pick. However, you get a you get a um a non black woman and they're okay with, you know, as long as I got somebody that's gonna do so and so, so and so with me. And I do feel like that it is uh kind of false on us because we 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 make ourselves believe that hey, my man's supposed to do everything for me. He's supposed to pay for this, he's supposed to pay for that. And really we have lost our independence as well. Mm. Okay. Now, it's also an over independence thing. Mm. Women also believe now you got that half that believes that you know I'm not over independent. I, I can I can mesh with somebody and, and right. be in coexistence like I was saying, but you got that percentage that's over independent and they don't want nobody to do nothing for them. Mm. Which is why they are the last pick. Because right. Don't, don't nobody want female. Now I know that you don't want nobody that you can't do nothing for. Exactly. Like, That's so true. I'm here. I'm, I, I'm here for no reason. You get what I'm saying? So right. I do believe that we have built that amongst ourselves to believe that we have to be over independent, and the world always tells us that we off we often have to be angry or strong, and we can't have our moments, and that's not true. Yeah. Everybody has their moments. Everybody has um, emotional sides. Everybody is uh, well, not everybody, but you. It's it's okay to be sensitive. It's okay to to um to not have your way all the time. That's right. I believe it's a lot of 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 our women who they just always want their way, and it, it's either that way or it's no way. And That's right. And then when so, you, when you mesh with that male that has the same uh, mindset, it just don't work. It just don't work. That's true. Let's dig into that though. Where does that come from nowadays? I can give you my answer, and I will let you think of your answer. Okay. I believe that mindset comes from since the '60s in our community. Over seventy-two percent of our families are born out of wedlock. Um, our kids are born out of wedlock. You know, so primarily, there are women raising kids alone. I'm not saying mothers are doing a horrible job. What I am saying is there's no balance that the father should bring in that. Meaning, women, we know, and women admit to it when they're on that cycle, are emotional. You know what I'm saying? By nature. So if you got, you know, if you got a household full of the estrogen and full of the emotions and, you know, just raising children to solely kind of think for themselves you know because i'm not saying we got women out there do phenomenal jobs at, at balancing it out you know but a lot of times parents should play that good cop bad cop thing you know where a uh, father come in you know maybe he too high strong mom come in okay calm down or vice versa but more often than not women being emotional they kind of more often than not look for look out for themselves so <laughs> You're raising kids for the most part with that type of mindset, you know. And um, but then you got 
also, because you mentioned the, the women are too independent, you have households with two parents, at, and they raise their daughters to not need a man whatsoever. You know, and that's a great thing up to a certain point. I believe people should raise their kids, their daughters, especially to be independent, but eventually move and move that into being interdependent. You know, you don't need to put that out there that you don't need a man, need a man, because if eventually, you know, and I think that's why our white counter, counterparts do that on a better level than us. You know, they, they understand besides feminists, of course, but <laughs> they understand that eventually I want to have a home. You know, I want to have a family. I want to have love. It's nothing wrong with that. You know, it's nothing wrong with that. So I have to give and take, you know, I have to give up of myself, give up of my independence in order to have that true happiness that I want. And it's okay with it. It's nothing wrong with it. Right. That comes along with that, uh, that compromise that I was right. talking about earlier. That, um, that's an element that most of our women just do not have. Like I said, that came from so many years of being born out of wedlock. You know, mm-hmm. the male leaving that that woman for whatever yep. reason that they that that um that happened between them. Right. And a lot of times I also feel like women stay and it's more often seen in black women than other women, we will stay in a situation so long till that it, it will mentally, physically and emotionally tear us down. Yeah. And then that makes us close off to to other males. Um, after that male, we no longer want to experience that anymore. And this that's something that you really cannot, you, you can't really uh, compromise cannot really be you, you're not born with compromisation. You're just not. It, yeah. it's, it's something that's taught. It's something that's uh, shown it's something that is, you have to, it, it's one of them see it things. If you don't see, you know, it being compromised when you're growing up, I, I like to say, um, I got this from, but I can't remember the source exactly, but it was a source that told me that zero to seven is when a child learns the most important things to them. No doubt. Seven is uh, when their child learns, you know, this is how, I, this is what is is important to my parents. So when I grow up, this is what is going to be important to me. So That's if right. you don't see that that compromise in your home, then you you will not get that. That that's something you will miss out on, unfortunately. And that that that's very unfortunate. It's it's not really a question that's really you know can be answered because it's just something that has to be shown. It's something that you have to get. And if you don't get it, it's it's like you missed out. You, that's so true. I wanna I wanna piggyback on something you just said. I have to write it down so I won't forget. Okay. You said stay in a bad situation for so long. A lot of women do that. Like, but why do the bad guy get so many chances? I call myself a good guy. I would call myself a good guy overall. I do my crap too. Don't get me wrong, but <laughs> <laughs> but overall I'm a good guy, you know. And I've, I've, been in, I've been in competition with thug guys and, and gangsters, you know, my whole life. I'm from Dallas, Texas. Grew up in Oak Cliff, Pleasant Grove. I don't know if you heard about those cities. One some of the toughest cities in America. Right. And me being a good guy growing up in that, I've been in competition with those sagging pants, fighting everyday dudes for girls' attention my whole life, you know. And... But they will stick with them dudes, give them dudes all the sex, get a dude, get wore out, have five, six babies with that dude, and then get ready for a good guy. You know what I'm saying? The good guy got to take all the baggage. Yes. You know? My favorite, my favorite example of this, people love this couple to this day, right? Sierra and Russell Wilson. People love them, right? Yeah. But look at them. Look, really look at it. Russell Wilson, cookie cutter guy. You know, clean cut football player came into the league, married to an interracial couple, just like we, the, what the topic is. He was married to a white lady. We don't know what happened with their divorce. We don't know what happened. That's credit, kudos to her, because she could have wrote all kind of books right by now and getting, oh, be getting paid. 
<laughs> but kudos to her. But so they got divorced. Whatever the timetable is, and next thing we know, he was Sierra. You know, but Sierra come what come with what a baby, not just a baby, a baby by a known drug addict and drug. <laughs> I mean, a dude who who famous, but you know he he run a shop on everybody in, in Hollywood or in uh in, in Atlanta at least. Put it like that. Future. But now, not only Russell Wilson coming with no kids, he got a ready made family. He got. To put up with a knucklehead baby daddy, but then they flaunting the baby, they flaunting the little boy. The blue boy got Russell Wilson jersey on before they even get married. You know, then you have another baby. I don't know if you've been seeing recently. Now he wearing cornrows and he talking hard, hard. And the reason I say he doing that now, I was just talking to my wife about this yesterday. I think Russell realized that what Sierra really want is future. That type of guy. She know. Ain't no future in future. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Ain't no, <laughs> ain't nothing. He, you know what I'm saying? Ain't nothing going good over there. So let me settle in what I really want. That's what I'm saying. Well, re- going back to what women really want, what men really want. In general, as humans, we want love. We want security. We want to, you know, come home, white picket fence, all that crap. Right. But why put us as good guys through all that mess? You know what I'm saying? Because people like John ja Moran, I ain't saying he did, but I have a homeboy. I'm actually about to perform his wedding in a couple weeks, I'm um, a couple months. He got the same story. His whole life, good guy, black women give him a chance at all. Now, this dude got a house built up from the ground, got nice car, you know, amazing job. He getting married to another black woman. That's the woman who gave him attention. Now, you know what I'm saying? Because that the women... You know what I'm saying? Why do we got to wait until we get everything together and you get all the bad stuff out of your life until we finally get the woman, you know what I'm saying, that we've been wanting from the beginning? All right, okay. Uh, I feel like this got a lot to do with uh, the way that black people as overall believe. Um, and I'm going to say without saying that it's got a lot to do with um, – our everyday living, how we um, how we see the world, how how basically all the beliefs that we have about the world, basically, it, it, it it's more deep than that. But I don't really like to touch on that that uh, subject uh, because it's a it's a lot of people that just really do not understand that. That that believing system thing. I got you. Now I'm I'm, and I, I can share this with you, uh, if you don't mind me sharing. I, you I, got the floor. I am. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, I appreciate that. Uh, I consider myself a uh, spiritual being. Now, gotcha. That does not mean that I throw away the concept of religion. That is not what I'm saying. But I believe that. Um, because our people believe so much in religious ways that has a lot to do with the way we see the world, which also has a lot to do with the outcome that we get. No doubt. So that's, that's, that's just one of those things, Mel, where you can't really, you, you know, you have to not force your beliefs on people. You right. You have to just really let them see whatever they're going to see. Because no doubt. At the end of the day, it's about, it's really about elevating yourself. Now, right. Do you want to help people around you? Yes. Do you want people to open their minds to possibilities? Yes. But reality is, a lot of people don't. And right. I feel like this, uh, it's a lot of reasons why we don't, but I feel like black people are the most stuck. Mm. Because because of that um, I got you. and a lot of us don't understand why things are why life has happened to us the way that it's happening well it got to do with your belief if you believe that and the mind and, and really the mind is a powerful thing a That's very right. powerful thing so so far um that you you really wouldn't even believe the things that you say 
really makes your outcome. And a lot of people don't understand that. So that's, that's uh, excuse me, that's one of them things that it's just a belief system. If you so have true. In my opinion, it's just the way that you believe, which is why you see the outcome that you see in front of you. Right. That's so deep and that's so true. Man, I actually, <laughs> the yesterday, I think I got attacked two times for being a Christian. Uh, but I'm not a traditional Christian. Anybody who know me know I don't. I don't. I bre- I, I'm a drummer, so I play the drums at church. But other than that, I ain't going because <laughs> it's about my relationship with God. You know, it's 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 internal. You know, and I believe that you know Christ was a representation of Him. But I'm not. You know, I don't take the Bible in itself 100% literal. Right. So people attack. I got attacked twice by people who didn't know me. Didn't f- want to find out what I truly believe. They just saw the title of my video yesterday and yeah. just wanted to, you know, attack. But it's a, it's neither here or there. But I think people should be more spiritual. And I, I mean, God is within us, you know. So whatever you believe, it should start from within. Shouldn't be from no outside source, you know. So for religion, I'm not religious at all. I'm, I'm. It's about my relationship with Christ and with God. But anyway, that's that's big and. So and it is. I've learned that as well. Like I've 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 had the opportunity to go through a journey to get where I'm at right now. So I allow people to go through that same journey in their life. You know, I'm not gonna dictate to somebody else what you should feel. I got a lot of friends that was on the same tip I was on years ago. I, they may very well get to where I'm at, or they may stay where they at. But either way, it go they got the right to find their own journey. You know, but with that being said as well. Well, I sent that video to you yesterday. <laughs> yesterday about the lady, yeah. oh, <laughs> and <my. laughs> I, won't, won't, I, lie, man. I was kind of disturbed by that one. <laughs> that one caught me off guard. <laughs> I understand. I should have warned you beforehand, and I can't play it here because this got nudity with it. But anyway, just to describe it, it was a lady basically doing number one in, in, in the in the convenience store, just out in the open. And I only sent it for the mere fact that cause I want to ask this question. Okay. You know, because, of course, we allow people to have their own journey. But I remember a time where your, your grandma, your big auntie, somebody was able to hold younger women accountable. You know what I'm saying? Right. I remember the day where, like, you have your natural hair right now. And I remember, I, I vividly remember my grandma talking about weave. You know what I'm saying? I remember other other older women talking about and that being a bad thing like i, I don't know if you what you 21 right now right I yeah. yeah i look i think i did a little research on my bad but no, I, okay. it's fine. <laughs> I i i totally i, I felt like you would <laughs> <laughs> but i i remember when i was young that we used to be a bad thing now i'm all for women looking beautiful whatever you want to do make you look beautiful but whenever you take anything to the extent that you believe something synthetic or something that's not real look better than what you have. My goal in life is just to make women feel like what you have is good enough. You know what I'm saying? Your natural hair. My sister that's under me, she got 4C hair. You know, so she feel like that's the worst grade of hair. Ain't nothing she could do to make herself look beautiful with that. But now, I, I, was, I was with her for maybe two or three weeks straight, encouraging her and loving her. Now she wore her natural hair more than anybody. You know, and I think that's what is missing with a lot of women, a lot of our women, that and and it's not just about a look. First of all, because these men ain't going to eat other women because they hair a little better than ours. No, right. it's about a, first of all personality. But we do love to see our women wearing they natural. Men do love seeing it, you know, and being proud of it. And I ain't saying you can't change it up here every now and then, but okay. but you're primarily be. Primarily be yourself and being okay being with yourself. You know, you have anything you want you like to say on that? Uh, I do actually. I, I feel like you are so right in, in what you're saying because it's a lot of our uh, young women that have lost that element of being themselves. They uh and, and that's and like I said, that's got a lot to do with society showing our younger girls that you know this is what you need to look. Uh, all the commercials and it's 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 not programmed on purpose right. of our family, but it's programmed on purpose from the um, entertainment side. 
they right. want, they want us to see that element, and because that's how they get their money. They know that <laughs> black yep. women are they gonna spend their money for that. You're right about that. For the glasses, <laughs> for the nails, they gonna spend yep. it on that. And um, I myself, I, I had a little rocky road. I, you know, I haven't always been ex- as accepting to wear my natural hair, but I've always wanted to. Yeah. Um, now, only time I did wear, you know, the weave or anything is when I wanted to grow my own hair. No and doubt. Besides that, I, 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 I normally keep myself natural. And yeah. now I, I'm into the makeup thing. I do yeah. some makeup. I can't and I want you to plug your information here in a minute, too. Okay, okay, I will. Um, Because I do also have a channel. Um, yeah. But I'll get on that in a second. But, uh, yeah. My, uh, yeah, I do believe that um, our younger girls have lost their element and it's because um our our women period have lost that element they have okay. lost themselves a lot and it, it is really time for us to get back to our old roots as the older people would say okay. um, because believe it or not that's when we were at our best right so, that's um, so true but yeah my uh my channel tag is mo money mj uh <laughs> <laughs> I came yeah. along. I came up with that name a while back, and man, I did not know it was gonna take off like that. But people around my neighborhood call me Money all the time. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> that's one of my many nicknames. Um, no doubt. Mo, Mo Money MJ is my YouTube tag. Um, uh, let's see. I have a, a, a every every site I'm on is Mo Money MJ. Okay. So, Every site I'm on, I have a Twitter, Instagram, um, and a YouTube, and a Facebook. My Facebook is Miracle Jones, but yeah. uh, other than that, everything else is Mo Money MJ. And I, I'll uh, be sure to put everything in the description box for you. I'll definitely do that. Okay. Get it out there for you. But I did definitely uh, going along with that. I think kind of burst over a little bit though. But uh, do you believe that people or our, our women? Accept accountability nowadays, because when I sent you the video, you, you kind of said you don't want to bash her, and that's something I hear a lot. But if it's telling the truth, if, is it really bashing? You know. Well, that's that. In my opinion, the truth is facts, and and your opinion about the video is not really the truth because somebody else can have a different opinion. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So gotcha. now the fact of that video is she's using it on the floor. <laughs> That's the facts. But <laughs> my opinion on that is, you know, where are your parents? <laughs> Why did you do that? Yeah. Who were you raised by? <laughs> That's my opinion. My opinion yeah. is don't do that. Right. <laughs> you know, and, uh, <laughs> I don't think that um now, I won't go as far as saying uh, she just, you know, I won't talk about her because All I right. feel like I've also did enough of that along our years. And no uh, doubt. I just feel that it's better for us to instead try to encourage uh, our younger girls and in, in seeing that, you know, it's okay to cover yourself up. It's mm-hmm. okay to be modest. It's no doubt. Okay show everything on the internet because then once you show yourself to everybody, what do you have left to show your, your mate? No doubt. I, I, I agree with you there. I, I got a big, uh, one of my biggest people I follow on YouTube is a dude named Tommy Sotomayor. He's he's enemy, uh, public enemy number one to most black people because he talked harsh and hard to, to black women. And he say he do it because that's the way they grew up hearing things. And, uh, you know, I grew up, you know, my mom don't probably watch this, but it's okay. My mama told my call my sister helpers and all kind of stuff growing up, you know, and but the stuff didn't work, you know, no matter what. They talk no matter how hard to talk to them, cuss them out, whatever you want to do, that didn't work. You know, so encouraging do work. But I think just sometimes people just gotta go through what they gotta go through, you know, in order to 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 see that this is not the right way, you know what I'm saying? But but so I don't my, – my goal with what I do is not necessarily to talk to those who want to keep doing what they want to do. I'm going to have – anybody who open to, I need to do something better. You know, if you're at that point in your life 
that this is my crossroad. I just need direction. You know, that's what I want to do. You know, so my videos and the stuff I do is not for everybody. You know, I don't care who watch it. But if you at that point of that, then yeah, you're gonna get something out of what I'm saying. Um, so, and I hear this a lot. And you sound like you're very intelligent, especially for your age, and it's amazing. But an age ain't everything, of course. But I wanted to ask you this, just because we hear this a lot that black women are in a very uh, disproportionate part of life, or they are talked about so bad. And I'm not saying they're not. I'm just want to. I'm just directing the question this way, you know, because we have Malcolm X, who probably my most influential leader of all time. He said. Back in 1960, you know, that black women are the least protected. Black women are the, uh, you know, he went down the list of how black women need to be more protected by black men. And I always, people always throw that in my face about him saying it. And I always say, yeah, he said that back in 1960. I don't believe that's the case now. I, I, my humble opinion, I believe that most majority of people in America are afraid of black women in public places and on public posts. Like they afraid. Now I don't believe women like you. We'll be able to talk to you reasonably, but I believe people are on pins and needles, and especially businesses and all kind of stuff. If I say the wrong thing to her, she gonna blow this thing up. You know, so it's gonna be crazy. Like my business gonna get towed up. Based, I'm gonna lose customers. You know, <laughs> I'm, like, I'm just being funny with it, but at the same time, I believe. <laughs> like, so I want to ask you. You can address what I'm saying first of all, but I want to ask you this, a specific question. What is one thing that one disadvantage that black women have now that any other group of people have? Because I believe it's either equal or they have even more advantages. You know? Uh, man, I see what you're saying. I see where you're coming from. Uh, first, I would like to say that black women are normally seen as, you know, they call us the angry black woman. And yeah. I believe that's where a lot of that funnels from. That's why, um, because we feel unprotected or looked over is where our anger comes from. Hey. You know, me, personally, I, I don't really care if... Um, <laughs> If you if a black male gonna protect me because I'm gonna protect myself. Now, I got you. I, do, I do understand that you know every once in a while you do want your man to look out for you, and I do feel like a lot of our men, you know, when our women get into a uh, um, an argument with a, another male, a, a lot of our men won't step up and say, you know, baby, calm down, I got it, or baby, it's all right, let's just go. No, they won't do that. So uh, okay, I'm ain't gonna cut you off. Go ahead. So a lot of uh, a lot of women feel like they need to take that place, and 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 that's where the the balance falls off, All right? Because you don't have uh, that element in, like I said, the relationship. Uh, now I, I do I don't I don't think that's protecting black women, but I feel like. If it was more of that, the black woman in a particular wouldn't feel like she had to go off on everybody or, you know, uh, show everybody her attitude, right. if that was the case. Uh, and the question, I, I really, Mel, <laughs> that, that, <laughs> I'm just really baffled on that question because... <laughs> It's it's a lot of answers to that question. Okay. I don't know where to start? Uh, I'm just, I'm just asking for one. I've been I've been real confused about it. Um, uh, the que the question that went out my mind, Mia. Okay, ask me the question one more time. What is one disadvantage that black women have that other groups of people do not have? Okay. Disadvantage. I believe the disadvantage, one of the disadvantages that uh, black women have is we are always taught to be over independent. I believe that's a, I believe that is indeed a disadvantage because it's not needed. 
That's a phenomenal answer. That's a phenomenal answer. That's the best answer I ever received to that question. <laughs> and I didn't expect it. I, I, I thought I was going to stump you on that one. That was a phenomenal answer. <laughs> <laughs> I got to give it to you. But that's great. For real, I'm, I'm, I, I feel good. If nothing else come out of this conversation, I feel great about that. But I did want to go back to... Right <laughs> <laughs> I did want to go back to what you just said. Because me and my wife talked about this yesterday, too, in pre- preparation for this interview or for this debate. The term, handle me. You know, a lot of black women say, I need a man, I need a strong man that can handle me. You know, my wife was like, what you mean? Like, you're an animal? You know, like, right. <laughs> like we, were, we were watching a video of like, some horses getting handled. Uh, you know, they were about to mate. And then one horse ended up kicking the other horse in the head because the, cause the person wouldn't handle him the right way. You know, uh-huh. will handle her the right way. And uh, And I'm trying to see what does that mean, first of all. And then you mentioned... When a woman, a black woman, is in the midst of an argument with another man, our men don't step up. Like, why do you got to put me in that position? You know what I'm saying? Like, why? Right. I when we're going somewhere, <laughs> why you can't just be quiet? Or just, first of all, let me handle it. Or, you know what I'm saying? If the situation is that bad, your man standing right next to you, you don't think he can say the same thing you just said? Obviously, it's not that bad a situation. But most, majority of time, men don't step up because we think in our head, it's your fault. You know, if you would have shut up, you know what I'm saying? If you would never went into that, we would you know what I'm saying? We wouldn't be in this situation. And we find it a lot. You know, I'm, I'm, it's going to get deep when I'm about to say right here. Okay. A lot of our killings in our black community of black males are started from that situation. Some black women got into it with a dude. I'm going to tell my brother. I'm going to tell my daddy. I'm going to tell. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't have any daughters yet. Well, my lesson gonna be to my daughter. If your dude hit you, let's talk about domestic violence. If your dude hit you, and you calling me, I'm gonna say you must want to stay there. If he hit you and you not right here next to me, you know what I'm saying? If y'all live in the same city or state, if you're not sitting right next to me, that means you want you want to keep going there. Because if it, if it's that bad, you know what I'm saying? Don't put me in a situation. I remember, uh, I mean, we talking so long, but uh, what's his name? Uh, fabulous. Him and his wife or ex-wife got into it. Domestic violence. She called her daddy over there. Knowing Fabulous is known for having guns. You call your daddy there, what he gonna do first of all? Fabulous got bodyguards and guns. So you put your daddy in a situation where he can easily be killed. You know what I'm saying? Or hurt. Right. Those are situations you know I ain't, I ain't talking about no other race. Just, I just stick on, the, I just stick on our race. But you don't hear about that a lot in other races. But I'm just saying, why do we have to go through that? And I do, I I do agree with you. Uh, a lot of our women put our men in those situations when really you should just walk away. Uh, yeah. A lot of time, women, uh, our women in particular, feel like they need to prove themselves or get their point across when really. It, the the biggest lesson that that we need to learn is just walking away. That's right. That, that that that's a that's a big lesson. Now, should you walk away from stuff you believe in? I, I that that comes along another another conversation. Right. But as far as putting our women, uh, our men, I'm sorry, I, in that uh type of situation, I do I do agree with you, Mel. We do that way too often, and it do and it does often lead to uh the death of our men and which is very unfortunate but that that like i said that that comes along with the upbringing of that woman and the upbringing right. of that um that young girl she she don't the old folks say she don't know no better <laughs> <laughs> so uh <laughs> yeah. that 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 uh puts her in situations where she feels that well my man's supposed to look out for me in that situation and a lot of times you don't take responsibility for being wrong. Mm-hmm. A lot of, of a lot of our women don't like to be wrong. And right. I, I myself can attest to that. I have <laughs> moments where <laughs> where I don't like to be wrong, man. I'm, I'm you ain't alone. You, you're not alone. <laughs> <laughs> so, I had a, oh, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, but that's that. I mean, I was really basically done. So. That, like I said, that's just a belief system, a, a upbringing of that of that woman. No doubt. 
where I, I believe it comes from. Miracle, we need a miracle in our community because right about that, man. Our women are, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I want men, women to get 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 in relationships because that's all I see on my timeline is them craving for it. But it goes. I think we hit so many great points in this conversation about why it's simple. It's simple as why because first of all, the cutoff game have come have just gone crazy. Like you, you can't expect a guy to have everything you know you ever desired on one list. You know what I'm saying? I can understand if you've already been married once or twice, and you say, okay, I'm just ain't putting up with this. But majority of the time, it'd be physical physical attributes more than anything, you know, that and women cut off about. And then it'd be stuff that if you maybe give a man a little time, maybe you mean the guy in the middle of his come up. You know what I'm saying? Maybe he's still working his way up to where he where he eventually be. Because contrary to proper belief, even black men, we're progressively getting better. You know what I'm saying? And I like. I, I do believe that. I mean, by the time we hit 50, we're at a financial, pretty much financial peak. So the more you stay, you know, stay along with a guy, and then statistics say, and we don't need statistics to really tell us this. You can look at it with your bare eyes. That women, your plateau is going down the older you get. You know what I'm saying? Like, as far as the beauty, it's the number one thing that captures a man's, you know, attention. Money is no number one thing that captures women's attention. So, as a woman gets older, <laughs> once you hit 30, it's pretty much down here from there unless you start doing some cosmetic stuff or doing dramatic <laughs> weight loss. But for me... That- <laughs> I, I'm just saying. You can look at statistics. It tell you that's what happened with dating. That's why the main women that hit on me right now as a married man, the main women hitting on me now is forty to forty five year old women. <laughs> I'm just kidding you not, cause they know my I, my clock is ticking as far as everything you know. But for men, the more we get older, the more wise we get. We stop worrying about chasing vagina. We just we worry about chasing money more than anything. You know, bam, we get we get we coming to our own, we coming to our best of life. You know, that's why a lot of men get fifty. Don't have no, if if you don't got no kids by then, you get your twenty year old, twenty something year old. Bam, yeah. you got <laughs> you get you know get to create your legacy through her. But uh, but the cutoff game got to stop. I'm saying, I'm sorry, it got to. You, yeah, you can have your criteria, but you can't expect the man to have everything. You know, I think. I'm, I'm gonna let you go ahead. Say what you feel about the cutoff game. Uh, the cutoff game. I, I do believe you coming from there. Uh, uh, now that 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 comes along with um, knowing what you want. If, yeah. if you if you if you go into a relationship not really knowing what you want, then first of all, you need to go back. Don't don't be by yourself a little while. Yeah. Because you're not ready yet. You're just not ready yet. You're not there. But I, I do believe um, a lot of our women want to be with somebody so much that they don't work on themselves. First. It, it, it's so important to 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 work on yourself first. Yeah. That way, when you find that man or that, that uh, when, when that black man finds that woman, mm-hmm. you, know, you will be equally yoked. You That's right. You will be unequally yoked. That's right. In, in, in black people's terms. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. We have a lot of uh we do have a lot of issues with with it. We find somebody and they, they don't really meet they we have no intentions at all of being with that person. But we lead it we lead that on. Exactly. And and that comes with the uh then comes the problems. Right. Because you're not in the relationship for the right thing. In the That's right. And you wasting time, you know. Yeah. You wasting time that you could be putting on something else and, and something that's more valuable. And uh so yeah, I think it's been a great conversation. I'm, I know you got things you need to do, so I'm gonna let you go, but I'm gonna give you the last word as far as what you believe about this topic overall and just any word of advice that you have for women as far as that that uh first of all advise women as far as getting negative when you see interracial couples when a man is black and then what would you say about women as far as how to any advice you have on women that, that's trying to look for a successful relationship okay um 
uh, as the topic overall, can black men control slash handle an, uh, an alpha female? Um, I do believe that it's possible, but you have to have the understanding, like I said earlier in the conversation, and that's why I keep that. Um, as far as advice on um, finding that person or that that the one that you want to be with, I, I believe it's important for you to take time for yourself, find yourself first. So that when it's time, that male may find you. Yeah. Don't go looking. No doubt. The male, by nature, is a hunter. Say it. (laughs) (laughs) So uh, I do believe that's an important part. And my advice to um, women my age, women below my age, women above my age, all women, um, try to be, find your compromise. Find how to compromise because it's going to be times in the relationship where you really don't like something, but you do that because you love that person and that's the person that you want to be. And we have to just be okay with that. Be okay that that this is the person I want to be with and I don't want to lose this person because of that. So right. that is why you need to compromise. Compromise. And I think a, a lot of our women should do that. So that's my advice to uh, young women, old women, new women, <laughs> any women. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Find your compromise. <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> Who watch this and want to dispute what she's saying because of her age. Because I know a lot of they, they probably can't, they probably with you the whole time until I said your age. They want to dispute that. And yeah. about the age, you know. When did David kill Goliath? He was right. young. You know what I'm saying? And about that. You know, y'all old people still struggling. You no know, 50-year-olds be get, asking me for advice and stuff like that. So, and about the age, I, Miracle, you a wise woman. I'm glad that yeah, glad so that we connected. And uh, so, I'm going I'm to put your inf- information in the uh, description box. And I'm going to also put it at the end of this video here so everybody can come. I'm going to come over subscribe as well right now. And uh, so, yeah, we want to support her. And uh, so, Miracle, appreciate you so much. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you so much, man. This was a great opportunity for me. I really appreciate it. Oh, man. Pleasure all mine. Hope you have a good one. Thank you.